Los Morales talking to composer Shonda Dancy regarding her score for the upcoming film Devotion. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, so I've seen, uh, you know, I've read the, the previous works that you've done. Is this your biggest project to date, considering the scope of the film and how wide it's going to be released? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the, the biggest. Really, really excited. <laughs> You know, so you've been obviously working as a composer for some time. How did this project come about for you? Mm, well, um, my agent um, actually worked with um, a lot of the producers in Black Label, Black Label Media. Um, and so, you know, I was, um, I hired him on another project um, that uh, I was hired for called The Defeated. It's on Netflix, a um, pretty big TV show. Um, and so... He was like, yeah, Black Label, they're looking for a composer for their upcoming film. And, you know, maybe you should put your put your name in the hat. And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> so I just demoed um, and met with the director, read the script, loved the script. And by some miracle, <laughs> I was hired. So it's really awesome. I've known actually JD and Jonathan for some time through their previous films. Oh, right on. Uh, and working with JD... You know, what came first for you? How do you normally work? Is it more or less like you read the script, you're composing the music, or you see the scene and you compose the music? So so it, it, it can go either way. But in this particular case with Devotion, I read the script and I started writing to the script. So one of the main themes was actually one of the very first things that I wrote just from the script. Um, and then I didn't really start seeing any footage until probably uh, a couple of months later. So, you know, the scoring process started really early on and really allowed us to experiment and create our own kind of sound. So, yeah. Is it a challenge knowing that when you're reading a script and you know how many scenes there are, you have to create a certain amount of music per scene if it, if it calls for it, you know, and then you wait to see whether or not it's going to go in or not? Really, as far as that goes, you, you need to see actual footage. You know, because it depends on on the acting. It de depends on camera pans and moves and things like that. Whether like what I'm going to do musically. Um, so, you know, it's easier to to create character themes early on because the character is in the script. You understand, you know. Uh -huh. um, but as far as like actual scoring and tailoring to scenes, you have to have that picture. You know, so. Uh -huh. And so. You know, throughout the, I, I listen to the score and, and it goes, you know, there's a, a, a barrage of whether it's emotional, pulsating, you know, um, when you're coming up with these scores and obviously, you know, you have the flying scenes and so forth, you know, are you working with JD in terms of what he's looking for as opposed to what you want to add to it? You know, did you, how much, how much uh, latitude were you given in terms of the score you wanted to put in? Well, I feel like I had a lot of latitude. Now, JD and I definitely worked very closely together, but we had similar tastes. So, you know, it wasn't like we were bumping heads or like he wanted to go in a certain direction and I wanted to go into a certain direction. It was a really, really great collaboration. So, you know, he would give me um, maybe some, some inspiration. Like, for example, he sent me like some tracks of some plane sounds, like actual like plane sound effects, like um, the Corsair, uh, the plane, when it dives, it has like this very special kind of whistle. It's called a dive whistle. <laughs> and it's pretty infamous, like kind of sound. Um, and I use that as in, in, inspiration in the score. Like I had the orchestra emulate the sound of, of planes and that dive whistle. So that's an example of, you know, JD would give me some some great, you know, inspo <laughs> to jump off of and then I'd create a soundscape and then we get back together and we listen to it and go oh yeah cool how about we do this or do that you know so yeah it was a lot of fun <laughs> how much of your music ended up in the film all of it <laughs> all of it there was nothing left Literally, it's not going to be like a, an extended version <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing left. There's no extended version. Like literally every cue was used and then and then some. <laughs> there were some extra cues that were put in there. So yeah. Now this is not your first time doing scores. And I've interviewed composers in the past. And the one thing I try to ask them is, you know, how challenging is it coming up with a new score so that way you don't sound repetitive and bring in something from what you previously had done? Well, the thing is you're going to sound like yourself. No matter what 
like and 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 hopefully you do sound like yourself because you know you want to have like a signature sound that people come to you for um but i mean music is infinite you know there's so many tools you don't necessarily have to always use a big orchestra you can you know you can use synthesizers you can use the sound of your voice through recorded through pro tools and like put all sorts of effects on it or things like that like you know I play a lot, I play all the string instruments. So, you know, I'll do some crazy string effects, like solo string effects and like put it through a, a guitar pedal board. And, you know, you, you can create something unique in every project. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, of course it'll sound like you, but it won't be the same <laughs> score. So, um, yeah, there I don't find it hard. <laughs> there aren't that many female, there aren't that many women composers Black women composers in the film business, you know, at least not according to, you know, as, as many films as I see, I don't hear that many, or at least they're not being marketed as much. What led you to try to come into this business? Oh, well, I was always a composer. And when I mean always a composer, I mean, like, I started writing little songs when I was a kid and started writing orchestral works when I was in middle school. So I always wanted to be a composer or at least a musician. Um, so whether I do film scoring or for the concert stage or just, you know, in my bedroom for myself, I was going to be <laughs> composing, you know, so it, the path of life just kind of led this way, you know, so um, after, well, during undergrad is when I decided to try and give film scoring a shot. Um, and so, you know, I worked with um, the Dean of the School of Music where I was, I, I attended this really, really small um, university, Houston Baptist University. But anyway, the Dean was also my composition professor. And she's like, okay, we'll put together like a specialized course for you um, to, so you can create a film and score it. And then you can use that as like applications for like film school, et cetera. So I did that and uh, showed it to the founder, uh, co-founder of the USC film scoring um, program, Morton Lordson, who just so happened to be at my university. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then did the USC film scoring uh, program. And so, you know, it, you know, when I did that program, I felt like, okay, yeah, this is, I'm on the correct path in life. This is a, a natural evolution of just kind of like what I've always done. So it was never a question. Like I, I didn't even think about doing another career or whatever. So, yeah. You know, during your career, I saw and read that you were on it at the same time as John Williams. <laughs> yeah. No, and when crazy. you get that far, you're close to that guy. There's got to be a level of excitement, like, okay, I can take it from here on out, you know, and, and it's inspiring, you know, when you're being honored with, the, you know, one of the legends in the composing, in the composing world. Yeah, and that was very early on. That was like, I had just graduated from, from the SC film scoring program, and I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, and so, you know, there was, there were definitely moments in my early, early, early student career <laughs> in which I was just encouraged by these amazing giants, you know, John Williams. I interned with Mike Post, um, uh, like right before I started USC. And I remember Mike Post, like telling my dad, <laughs> he said like, your daughter can do this, you know, and this was back in 2003, you know? And so it's moments like that, that stuck with me that like encouraged me to just really stick it out, like no matter what happens. So it's good that yeah. I watched enough TV to know who Mike Post is. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like to know who Mike Post is. It's like, okay, she dropped that name out there. You know. <laughs> um, but you know, when you when you do this work and you know, was there and going back to uh devotion, was there any particular track, or is there any particular track you're more fond of that when when the movie comes out wide and everybody gets to see it? that you hope this one stands out besides the theme because most films the theme song is used in the beginning and then also at the end yeah yeah <laughs> and that's kind of kind of the same <laughs> so um i mean there's there's oh i, I like a lot of the cues <laughs> so um i <laughs> you know I, i'm really happy with what i was able to produce um but I guess like one of one one of my favorite cues is um, there's a, a flying scene. It's called the lighthouse, um, and it's you know yeah it's got the main theme in it, <laughs> you know, but there's several other themes and then but it's so joyous, it's so jovial. Like I I feel like you know if people can find a lot of joy <laughs> listening to that track, that will make me very happy. So yeah. 
and you know, obviously, to wrap it up, obviously, when you do a film like this, big, big film, it's going to be released in theaters worldwide. What did you take after working on this particular project that you can hopefully take on to your next project, you know, that either was you're caught upon or you go after? Hmm. Well, it's, you know, just pace yourself, like take care, take care of yourself, um, have a well-rounded life, you know, composing isn't 150,000% of your life. It should be like, you know, 50%. And then like your family and your, your health and your, your, your life, you know, should be the other 50%, like have, have a proper balance. Um, and that's just what I tell myself all the time. Like have a proper balance because this is a, a marathon, not a sprint this career. So yeah. Well said. Congratulations <laughs> on the gig. Congratulations on the score. Looking forward, Thank hopefully, you. for more people to hear it. Looking forward to seeing people see what you do down the road. We are yeah. good to go. 